Now, over 200 million people have watched my next guest on YouTube as he cut his newborn daughter in half. Watch. She's still sleeping. Yes, he just was released out of prison this week for doing that to his daughter. No, actually, I saw him and saw that video and some other things he did. I said, I want this guy on my show. I want you to welcome world-famous magician Justin Flom. Thank you. Hey. What's happening? Thank you so much. My name is Justin Flom. I am a magician. Uh, I wanted to try out something kind of fun here. Uh, Oh, there is a couple young people here. Uh, this is a newspaper. It's this old thing. <laughs> Once a day, they print out a portion of the internet. Uh, they still do it every day. Of course, they only do so from one perspective. <laughs> yeah, that always gets more laughs on the right. I don't know why that is. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. This is one of the very first magic tricks my dad ever taught me. You know, my dad was a magician. My uncle was a magician. Great-grandfather was a magician. That's really true. Uh, I actually grew up sawing my little sister in half. Well, now she's my half-sister. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is, if you watch, you can actually see and hear this newspaper being torn. Uh, I don't have a magic trick here. I just thought it'd be fun to come on national TV and tear up the New York Times. Uh, no, of course, I am a magician. You have to do something quite magical. Just like that, you can see absolutely nothing inside, but then again, it is the New York Times. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so happy to be here. There's a, there's a reason I'm here, and it's because of a story that I told several years ago. And this story went wild online. It went to millions of people. It was my very first video uh, that ever went viral. Since then, I've had over a billion views with a B online. But it all started with a story. Now, this story isn't mine, uh, so I can't take credit for it. But it means a lot to me, and I hope you like it. It's a story about a young serviceman overseas at war. He's got a deck of cards spread on his bunk, and uh, a lieutenant walks in and says, son, what are you doing? And he says, well, sir, I was just about to spend some time with the Lord in prayer. Lieutenant laughed at him. He said, son, it looks like you're about to play cards, poker, something like that. He said, I know, sir, but if you allow me to explain, I think you'll find this rather interesting. You see, it may seem ordinary to you, but this deck of cards acts as my Bible. Uh, of course, in my Bible, the ace reminds me that there's only one God. In my Bible, I have the two, which reminds me of the two halves of the Bible, the New and the Old Testament. I have the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, represented by the three. I even remember the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, with the four. I remember every week the six days in which God created the heavens and the earth, and of course, the seventh day on which he rested. That's my Sabbath. I try to live my life by the Ten Commandments, and my absolute favorite card in the deck is my Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the King of my heart. <laughs> After the young serviceman said all of that, the lieutenant was really, frankly, rather impressed. The young man said, that's not all, sir. You see, in the deck of cards, there's four suits, hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds. There's four seasons in every year. There's 52 cards in the deck, 52 weeks in the year exactly. And if you were to count up every spot in a deck of cards, it would equal 365 the days in a year. So you see, this deck of cards, it's my calendar, my almanac, and my Bible. With it spread before me, I can see all that I have to be thankful for. Well, that's a nice story, and that's, that's really the way I learned it, but I take it a step further. You see, as a magician, I work with a deck of cards for a living. And every time I look at a deck of cards, I'm reminded of this story and the fact that I have the freedom in this country to tell it. And all of that is because of a young man or a young woman overseas fighting for my freedom.
beautiful. Okay, so I know that it's impolite to ever ask a magician, how did you do that? <laughs> so how did you do that? It's amazing, isn't it? No, it is, it's beyond amazing. I, you know, I, I just, I, I've seen your videos. I'm blown away. I don't know how you did it. Don't know how the whole thing happened. But I realized you've come from a very magical family. That's right. We grew up, we did magic with everything. I found these backstage. Uh, you've got lifesavers for all of your guests. That's very mm -hmm. kind of you. And w growing up, we would just do magic with anything. Like it'd be a lifesaver or, um, let me see what I got here. Some headphones. Uh huh. That's the real magic trick, pulling these out on Tangled. <laughs> I'll show you how to do that. After say, show. that was, that's magic, right, here, my friend. Here. Let me see if I can get this right. Okay. Right? <clears throat> oh, my soul. <laughs> can you guys see this? Hang on. Oh. <laughs> You know, I, I ate a peanut here one time. I'm not touching that. No, I don't But I'm you. telling you, see, that's, that's the kind of, and I'm this close to you, and I, I, I absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is amazing. It really is. That's Do all you I can have... say. When you ask how it's done, yeah. the thing is, is it's so much more fun not knowing. Uh, they say that go magicians are the guardians of an empty safe. <laughs> and the reason is, when you learn the secret, you go, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> I can't believe you, you spent 10 years lurking on deck of cards, sleight of hand, just to do a silly card trick. Uh, yeah. you, you know, I know all the people in your family, but you must have had some other, uh, just through the years, magicians that have really inspired you or uh, kind of given you the, an inspiration. Who are they? You know, they're guys you've never heard of. Really? There's an underbelly of magic. You know, uh, I've lived in Las Vegas for the last 10 years. Just moved here to Nashville. And the cool thing is, is uh, when you're a songwriter, you live in Nashville. Yeah. When you're a magician, you live in Las Vegas. Uh -huh. All these creators are there, guys who create the stuff for the big names out on the strip in Las Vegas or whatever. And those are all my friends. And I try to get the original magic creations before they go to the big guys. I try to get them, hey, give me this thing. And that's some people's job is to invent magic tricks. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, you do a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff like close work, which is incredible because it's, it's I think it's harder to fool the audience when you're up this close. Exactly. But you, you do some stuff with cards. So. With decks of cards, yeah. In fact, okay. everyone in the audience has a deck of cards. And you said uh, to the viewing audience at yeah, home, I told them to get, their get cards. a deck of cards out because you can follow along. Wherever you are watching this on Earth, if you follow my directions, the magic will work for you. So the studio audience is going to follow along. And uh, at home, you can, you can do it too. You got your okay. own cards right there. I have some here. Take nine playing cards. You don't need the whole deck, just nine. Make sure you really do have nine cards. And here we go, follow my directions, the magic will work for you. Spread them out like a poker hand so you can see every single card of your nine cards. Okay. Just like this. Now here's the deal, we're gonna memorize one of these cards, let's make it random. Uh, all do this with me. Uh, let's take the second card from the left, take a look at me. Second from the left, it'd be that one right there. Now don't look at mine, but look at yours, because we all have different cards. Memorize that card. Burn it into your memory, otherwise at the end, this is a stupid trick. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Once you got it, close up the cards and hold them so you can't see them. We're all going to shuffle these cards in an interesting way. We're going to use your name. Watch me first. If your name is Bob, you would take one card for each letter and put it onto your lap or on the table. Watch this. B, O, B, into one single pile. Go ahead and do that right now with your own cards and your own name. Beautiful. And take the rest of the cards left over in your hand and place them down on top. Perfect. Pick up the cards. We're all going to do this together in unison. We're going to spell the word loves. L-O-V-E-S. Do it with me. One card for each letter. L-O-V-E-S. Take the rest of the cards, place them down on top. It's like we're writing our name into a tree, carving our name into a tree. It's your name loves whoever. It could be your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, son, daughter, whoever it is that you love. Spell out their name. One card for each letter right now. Excellent. If your spouse is sitting next to you, I suggest you spell her name. <laughs> Take the rest of the cards left over in your hand, place them down on top. Really quick review. We all have different cards here in this room. We all have a different name, and we all love somebody else. We all did this differently. But even though we've all done it differently and everybody at home did it differently, I'm going to find your card. Pick up all the cards. Okay. Take the top three cards. Okay. Hold them out towards your television set. Wave them up and down. Nope, not those. We can put them down. We don't okay. need those anymore. 
take just the next two cards. Just the next two cards. No, put them down. We don't need okay. them anymore. Take just the next single card. Oh, yeah. That's not the card. Put it down. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> take just the next single card. Hold it out. Ladies and gentlemen, turn it over. That is your <laughs> card. Yes, it is. Take a look at what you got. Yes, it is. That is. Did it work for you? Yes. Isn't that weird? That is, that is frightening. Amazing stuff. Justin, I, you've got to come back. You're here in Nashville. I'm here in Nashville because I'm doing a show over at The Standard, which is this beautiful steakhouse in downtown Nashville. I've heard great things about it's it. It's an incredible show. you got to come check it out. And Justin Flom's Make Magic Share Joy Tour in partnership with Compassion International kicks off the 28th of September in Indianapolis. And he just mentioned, and I want to tell you about this, The Standard of Magic Show every Thursday at The Standard here in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, you can get tickets for any of Justin's shows. Go to justinflom.com. That's justinflom.com.